Hi, this is David Yak, and in this video, we're going to say hello to Microsoft DataFlex and goodbye to the Common Data Service. Now, before you get all sad about me saying we're going to say goodbye to the Common Data Service, let's talk about what happened at Microsoft Inspire just recently. Microsoft has announced Microsoft DataFlex, a new entry-level way of building applications leveraging the Power Platform. They also announced that they're renaming the Common Data Service to Microsoft DataFlex Pro. Now you can probably tell from the difference, Microsoft DataFlex and Microsoft DataFlex Pro, that Microsoft DataFlex is an entry-level path to build applications that can then grow up into full-blown Microsoft DataFlex Pro applications. All of these leveraging the Power Platform, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agent, and we'll dive into what that means as we go through the rest of this video. Now I wanna be super clear because there's gonna be questions on questions about this, but the common data service equals Microsoft DataFlex Pro. It's simply a rename. It's a way to differentiate it from the common data model, which sometimes people got confused with between the common data service, common data model, and it also fits in line with the entry path from Microsoft DataFlex. Now as part of this renaming, you may see some vocabulary that we're used to with common data service or CDS change a little bit. For example, where you used to use the word entity to describe what you were storing data in, you might see it be called a table. Things like this more mainstream some of the vocabulary that is used to make it a little more approachable from people that are just beginning to build applications. So what exactly is Microsoft DataFlex then? It's a way to quickly build apps and bots and automation inside Microsoft Teams. And notice I said inside Microsoft Teams. That's very essential to understand because these apps that use DataFlex are built and run in the context of Microsoft Teams, whether it's on your desktop or on your mobile application. The second key thing to understand is that Microsoft DataFlex for Teams will be available as part of your Teams license. That is critical to allow this to be broadly adopted across organizations and leveraged without having to worry about how do you get a specific Power Apps or Power Platform license for individual users. This opens up a number of scenarios that were blocked or would otherwise push people to use SharePoint or other technologies that might not be appropriate for the exact app that was being built. Now the data storage for DataFlex uses the same capabilities that DataFlex Pro has, but it's a lightweight version. It has some things that aren't necessarily needed for entry-level applications, but these can grow up into full DataFlex Pro applications if they need the additional features. And I'll be detailing some of the differences between DataFlex and DataFlex Pro as we get a little further in. So you're saying, Dave, aren't you just saying that SharePoint lists are no longer needed anymore? Not so fast. That's not what I'm trying to convey here. What I'm trying to say is that if you have a application that just needs a simple list, it's never going to grow up to be related to multiple lists, and you're going to build a relational model, then SharePoint or Microsoft lists is just fine for that and continue using them. They allow you to build applications on top of them, and they work for simple scenarios. What I'm trying to get across with DataFlex and using some of the constructs that the Common Data Service has or DataFlex Pro now has, is that you can build applications that are robust from the get-go without having to build them on SharePoint and then realize that you should have built them on CDS or DataFlex Pro or DataFlex to get the relational aspects of it as well as the scalability that comes with it. So let's dig in a little bit deeper and get to know DataFlex. So I tried to get across that Teams is the only client. So if you want to build a standalone Power App, then you can still do that. Or if you want to use a bot externally, maybe put it on a portal, those scenarios still exist. Nothing is changing from those existing scenarios, but you would need a full app license. So in other words, a Power Apps per app or per user license to run them standalone and be able to do that. Or if it was Power Virtual Agent, you'd need Power Virtual Agent sessions that you've paid for. What's included with the Teams license is running the application only in the Teams client. The apps and the data that they use are siloed per team. So behind the scenes, what happens when you enable a Power App with DataFlex behind the scenes is it creates an environment, just like you got for the Common Data Service or now DataFlex Pro, and that is associated with that team. And it is tracked as separate capacity as we'll learn as we dive a little bit more into how environment works. Microsoft does plan for you to build apps in one team that can be packaged for reuse in one or more additional teams. 
and probably the one that makes me the most happiest is there's an upgrade path from DataFlex to DataFlex Pro. So when you build your application, you set the, a good foundation, but you realize you need some of the additional features, things like field security or other more advanced features that DataFlex Pro has, you can go ahead and upgrade that to a DataFlex Pro environment and your applications can continue working without having to re-architect them in the new environment. Now let's look at some comparisons between DataFlex and DataFlex Pro so we understand some of the core capabilities. At the heart of it, things like basic data types, both of them will have. There are some more advanced data types that you might find only in DataFlex Pro. Basic relationships, being able to relate data, parent-child records, lookup fields, those are all available in both DataFlex and DataFlex Pro. Things like file and images. So if you're doing applications that are having users upload images or upload a document to be collaborated on, you can build with either DataFlex or DataFlex Pro. However, if you need features like mobile offline or relevant search, you'll notice that those are DataFlex Pro features. So if your application all of a sudden needed to be able to support offline users, you would just simply upgrade to the DataFlex Pro and you would gain that support. Now, from an application development feature comparison, I think it's important to understand at the heart of it, you can build a Power App. That Power App is surfaced in Teams, but just not standalone. You would require DataFlex Pro capabilities for the standalone applications. Things like paginated reports that use SSRS, those would require DataFlex Pro. Any of the Pro Dev features, things like API access or plugins, also require DataFlex Pro. However, you do get full capabilities with Power Automate, including use of the Common Data Service Current Environment Connectors. So for those of you that have taken my course on Power Automate and CDS, that's directly applicable both for DataFlex as well as DataFlex Pro. Now let's talk a little bit more about environments. So for those of you that come from the CDS or DataFlex Pro background, you're very used to creating an environment that has a CDS instance attached to it. We all know that the storage for those is highly tracked and you get capacity that you buy and acquire through the licenses that you have. In the case of DataFlex, DataFlex is tracked separate from the capacity for DataFlex Pro and each environment is associated with one team. In other words, a team that has an application using DataFlex has one environment associated with it and that has a two gigabyte capacity limit. You might think about that as being able to hold about a million rows, but it really depends on what data you're storing in DataFlex of how much you'll consume that capacity, but two gigabytes is the limit that they're making available. At the point you need more capacity, you would upgrade that to a DataFlex Pro environment, and that's through the promotion that they're talking about that's available for both types of environments. One of the core concepts of DataFlex is to make it very approachable by new people building applications. And with that in mind, Microsoft has set out to simplify the security that's made available so that there's not complicated choices that people building applications have to make. Core security things like record level security is still available, but things that are more advanced like field level security are data pro features. Here's a more detailed feature comparison between DataFlex and Pro for security. And you'll see that things like user roles will be focused around owners, members, and guests, but not allowing a complete flexibility of all kinds of custom roles that you wanna have. You'll notice that core activity logging is there, but if you want deep auditing, that is a DataFlex Pro feature. Things like manage customer keys. Well, entry-level applications have no purpose of managing their own security encryption keys. So that's a DataFlex Pro feature. Field level security we talked about, hierarchical security and sharing are other examples of DataFlex Pro features that DataFlex does not have without upgrading to DataFlex Pro. Now let's talk a little bit about integration. You can tell from the chart that Power Automate is the star of the show and the centerpiece for doing any integration you wanna do from a DataFlex application. Using the connectors, and if you have a standard office license, you have access to all the standard connectors. If you have a Power Automate license or a Power Apps license, then that adds the additional premium connectors that are available, bringing the total to over 350 that you can use to a variety of services to do integration. If you need some of the features like export to data lake or publishing events or webhooks, then you would need to upgrade to DataFlex Pro to get those more advanced features for deep integration. There are also some other things that require DataFlex Pro currently, and this list may change a little bit one way or the other as things evolve and the product matures. 
AI Builder is one of them, that if you need AI Builder, you would need to upgrade to DataFlex Pro to finish those scenarios. Model-driven applications, currently only Canvas applications will initially be available at the Go Live, but model-driven applications will be added later in 2020. And also, if you need to import and export solutions, that's planned for the future as well, but not expected to be in the first release of the product. Now, I want to highlight some of the new opportunities that this really opens up that weren't possible. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had around companies wanting to build something. They had a great idea, but it would just simply be cost prohibitive with the current Power Apps licensing on a per user basis, bringing that in. And oftentimes these were small applications, very point specific with a task in mind that needed to be completed. And this opens up that concept of organization-wide solutions to be built without having to require the individual licenses. It also opens up scenarios where guests that are part of your team can participate in using the apps and bots that you build, opening up an interesting scenario as you start thinking through what you can build with those types of access. And also for Power Virtual Agents, Power Virtual Agents has a lot of great features, but for many scenarios, the thousand per month base license fee is just too expensive. This allows you to use Power Virtual Agent for internal uses in the context of a team and have the same great features that you get with the standalone product. Well, that's it for my first look at DataFlex. I hope you've enjoyed the walkthrough and look for more information as the product starts getting released and we're able to get our hands on it and dive in and start learning all about it. Thanks.